I'm going to pray before we get started. So, Abba Father, we just come before you and we just thank you for this day. We thank you for your word and we thank you for your Holy Spirit. Lord, I just ask that you would soften our hearts, that you would cause our eyes and our ears to hear what you're saying. Lord God, I pray for a fresh infilling and an outpouring of your Holy Spirit today on our lives. And that, Lord God, when we live, leave here, we are going to be full earth with the Spirit, and we're going to have a deeper revelation of your word. So, Lord God, pour forth your presence and your spirit in the name of Yeshua. Good morning, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to our journey to Shavuot 2015. Let me start out today by introducing the feast days of the Lord. Now, they are not the feast of the Jews, but of the Lord. We are commanded to proclaim them. Now, there are eight feasts of the Lord. They are listed in Leviticus 23. We have a weekly feast, the Sabbath. And we have seven annual feasts. Pesach, Feast of Unleavened Bread, Feast of First Fruits. These feasts we celebrated just a little over a month ago. They are the Spring Feasts. And here comes our banners. The fall feasts are Yom Teruah, which many refer to as Rosh Hashanah. Then there is Yom Kippur. And finally, Sukkot. Again, look at the meaning of those banners. Hmm. Yeshua has fulfilled the three spring feasts, but the three fall feasts are yet to be fulfilled. You may have noticed that I only mentioned six annual feasts. Today, we are here to talk about the middle or the early summer feast called Shavuot. It is the fourth feast which has been fulfilled as well. Today is a special day as we are preparing for Shavuot which will occur tonight at sundown. Amen? <laughs> Shavuot has many facets. It is known primarily by the church as Pentecost, which means 50. And it is also known as the Feast of Weeks, because we count for seven <coughs> weeks plus one day. We only celebrate Shavuot on one day, but the Lord commands us in Leviticus 23 to count the days, 50 days to be exact. The Lord wants us, actually commanded us, to count the days between Pesach or Passover to Shavuot. Why, do you ask? Why? I think I'll tell you. Well, I'm not sure, but it appears that the Lord wants us to prepare for this event. If you don't know when the day is, how can you be prepared for it? It is much like a girl who is preparing for her wedding day. That's a big day, isn't it? Or perhaps a senior in high school or a person anticipating their college graduation. They want to be ready. As their special day nears, they begin to count down to the day. The event that they have been waiting for will change their lives. They are closing one door and opening up another. Unlike the bride counting down to her wedding day, we are counting up for the big event. It is a picture of walking up to or perhaps 
arise to the occasion. It is taught by some sages that the name Israel was at a spiritual low when he sent Moshe as their deliverer. Each step they took, and every day that passed, they became further and further from Egypt, which had held them in slavery, breaking off their shackles and walking more and more in their freedom, and they became closer and closer to their promised land. Today, we are going to be talking with some guests about the ancient paths of our ancestors. Our show today is entitled, Ancient History. Yes, Ancient History. Our guests, very special guests, are Joshua from around 1500 BC and Peter from around 33 AD. Joshua, Peter, come on down. Joshua, hello, come on. Take a seat, fellas. Well, you're looking mighty sharp today. Thank you, thank you. And thanks again for some coming from such a great distance and a long time ago, too. Joshua, this is for you. It is truly our pleasure. The Lord's word and the furtherance of his kingdom knows no distance or time. Yes, indeed. All that involves the Lord is eternal. I know that this day is really focusing on the festival of Shavuot, but we are really glad that you included all of the feasts in your introduction. As Peter said, all things concerning the Lord are eternal. You mentioned in the introduction, the Lord told Moshe in what we know as Vayikra, or Leviticus 23.2, to speak to the children of Israel and tell them to proclaim the feasts. The feast days are appointed times that he asked us to meet with him. Think about this. The creator of the universe wants each of us to meet with him. He has extended an invitation. Yes. In Psalm chapter 8, verses 3 and 4, it says, When I consider your fingers, the moon and the stars, which you have ordained, what is man that you are mindful of him, and the son of man that you visit him? Well, it's more than an invitation. He is actually requesting our presence before him. So he wants us to R-S-V-P? Uh, we're not sure quite what you mean by that, but he does want us to show up. And if we don't, we will miss an outpouring of his Holy Spirit. The core of the Gospels that were written in my day revolves around the first three of the seven feasts, Pesach, or Passover as you know it, Feast of Unleavened Bread, and Bikurim, or First Fruits. Then you have the fourth feast, which is Shavuot. The first four feasts were fulfilled in my lifetime and in Peter's lifetime as well. Yes, we saw the fulfillment of those feasts. Joshua and the rest of Moshe's camp saw it from the standpoint of a measured fulfillment, but also the foreshadowing of a greater work that would be fulfilled to a greater measure through the Messiah. What about the Feast of Yom Teruah, Yom Kippur, and Feast of Tabernacles? Well, in my day, once again, we saw them fulfilled one way. When we left Egypt, the first place we camped was Sukkot, which means booths. So, you're on there, cutting edge of the feast days, eh? Uh, we're not quite sure what you mean by that either. But in Joshua's day, they walked in the instructions of the feasts as not only a remembrance of what the Lord had done for them, but as as precursors or rehearsals to the greater work that is going to be done with the return of the Messiah. Habakkuk 2.3 says, For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it will speak, and it will not lie. 
Though it tarries, wait for it, because it will surely come. It will not tarry. His word and his promises are yes and amen. amen. So, as I talked with our guests before the show, they have a purpose for being here today. I'm glad. Joshua, can you tell the audience what that purpose is? All of you are part of Israel because you have been grafted in. You have been adopted by Abba, our Father. Being part of the ancient people, the Lord's people, you have a responsibility to the instructions of the feast days. Earlier it was mentioned that the Gospels revolve around the feast days, but actually the Torah, the prophets, and the writings, the Tanakh, the whole word of God, revolves around the feast days. The feast days are like a guidepost or a roadmap, a picture of the plan of the work of the Messiah. Yes, yes, a roadmap. It shows a path, an ancient path. The Father is whispering in your ears. Ask for the ancient paths, where the good way is, and walk in it, and you will find rest for your souls. The promises of Hashem are from the beginning of time and to all generations. Yes, in Exodus chapter 6, verse 8, it says, And I will bring you into the land which I started to give Abraham, to Yitzhak, and to Yaakov. I will give it to you as a possession and a heritage. I am the Lord. Isaiah 46, 10 through 11 says, Declaring the end from the beginning, and from ancient times, things that are not yet done, saying, my counsel shall stand, and I will do all my pleasure. Indeed, I have spoken it. I will also bring it to pass. I have purposed it. I will also do it. And the promise of the Messiah has been given down from the generations, from the beginning of time and forward. Yes, yes. And just as in the ancient wedding customs, until the day that the groom comes for his bride, they agree to set themselves apart from each other. The groom gives a gift of value and a speech of promises made by the groom to his bride. Hashem has given us those things as well. He has given us the Torah of Zarkatuba, the gift of the Ruach HaKadosh, and his promise to send our bridegroom. And just as the bride waited for the return of her bridegroom, we wait too. There is a wedding theme throughout the scriptures, and each of the feasts alludes to this theme as well. Am I right? Yes, and then we who are here today are a part of that eternal walk of faith that has been going on from the beginning of time. The generations who have gone before us and those that will come after us, it's about the walk of faith that was set into motion from the beginning of time and will continue for the rest of eternity. What our past generations did have had an effect on us today and the choices that we make today will affect the future generations. Yeah. 
as eyewitnesses are here to tell you that if you will grab on and to experience this heritage, that it will change not only your life, but will give deeper meaning and purpose to all that you do. Wow, that is something that I want. Okay, let's get started on our journey on the ancient path. Our crew has assisted us with pictures that will help give us a deeper understanding to what our guests experience. There seems to be parallels to what Joshua encountered on his journey with Moshe and Peter's travels with Yeshua. Oh. Okay, what's going on here? All right, uh, we have the first Pesach in Egypt with Moshe, and we have the last Seder in Jerusalem with Yeshua. We have the parting of the Red Sea, and we have Yeshua's resurrection, and both of these are setting captives for you. All right, we have the, the bitter waters at Mara turned to sweet, and we have Yeshua turning the water into wine at a wedding, turning our life from bitter